Hi everyone, Alvine here. How are you today? For this video, I wanted to talk about something that's been uh, coming up a lot lately that I've seen around that people are talking about. Witches or spiritual people charging money for services and products. So there are a lot of people that have no issue with this. It's like not a thing, but there are some people that do have quite an issue with it and it's being talked about a little bit. I've seen things like spirituality should be free or issues with how much people are charging or issues with how people are charging, all this kind of stuff. And one of the things I have seen is people say that way back when witches and cunning folk and herb lorists didn't charge people for the services that they gave. Now the thing is that's because back then we didn't have there wasn't money like money wasn't a thing back then trade was the way that you paid for stuff so you would get some kind of service purchase some kind of product and in return you would give something back so you would do some kind of service for someone else in exchange or you would give food or clothing or you know whatever it was back to the other person so that was the energetic exchange that happened these days the way that we energetically exchange is with with money. Now the way I like to think about money is as trade notes. The little pieces of paper or plastic, you know, if you're in Australia or wherever, <laughs> either plastic or paper, little, you know, metal coins aren't really worth much in and of themselves, but we give them value. We say this piece of paper is worth this much. And if I give this piece of paper to you, then I get something of equal value back again. So I think if we think about it like that, money becomes less of like this this idea that so many people have, it's such a charged thing. The topic of money is just so like, mm, and that's become very rampant in magical and spiritual communities, but it really doesn't need to be that way. All it is literally is a trading note. You give something, you get something in return. So because this is how we do it now, when we receive magical products or services, we do trade with our little notes that say, this is how much this thing is worth. Here you go. Thank you for my product or service. The thing is, you don't ever have to purchase anything for spirituality or for magic if you don't want to. Like there is no need to. You can go outside and you can collect and create all of your own tools. You can go to the craft store and buy little bits and pieces and craft everything on your own. You can pour your own candles, all this kind of stuff. You don't ever have to purchase anything if you don't want to. But most of us, at least as far as I've seen around the interwebs, do like to purchase things. It's fun. Like it's fun to get something that's ready made for you, or it's fun to go and get a tarot reading and receive insight that way from someone else. Or it's fun to pay for a course and, and to learn like a new thing about magic or spirituality. You can buy things that go across like every genre of everything. If you want it, someone's selling it somewhere. Let's talk about services. Services is kind of a big one. Some people are really like, funny about that one products they can understand a little bit more with services what you are paying for is one the person's time that they have taken to create something or that they take to actually lay out time to be with you or to film a video for you or you know whatever it is but also what you're paying for is that person's learning that person has spent years their entire life all of their experience is coming into what they are laying out for you what they're actually Actually giving to you with that service that's a lot of time energy and effort now if you don't want to pay for those things obviously you absolutely don't have to you can go away and you can learn all of that stuff for yourself and then you are taking your time and your energy and you're putting it into that rather than exchanging with your little trade note and going okay I'm paying you for all of your experience and knowledge and learning to impart something to me now a big thing I've seen is several youtubers and, and other people online but mostly youtubers just from what I've noticed being called out for not being authentic and there are some really interesting ideas of what creates someone not being authentic in some people's minds. As a consumer or as a potential consumer, obviously you 100% have the right to have your feelings about how someone presents their services, how much they're charging, all that kind of stuff. But the thing is, there is someone for every single budget. So if someone is charging a lot more than you'd ever be willing to pay, that's fine. Like there are that many other options out there. <laughs> you can always find something for your budget. But I really, it makes me sad to see a lot of people's names being dragged through the mud, not because they've received faulty products or services that are just like, like what the hell did I pay for? That kind of stuff. I feel like, you know, yeah, like share that kind of thing. But I, 
there's no need to be nasty about it. There's been a lot of nastiness that I've seen and it's just not necessary. There's no reason to personally attack anyone. And look, I've had a negative experience. I shared this on Facebook some time ago. I went to a guy who claimed to be this astrological wisdom keeper. He was like, you know, I've been doing astrology for years, you know, I know all the stuff, whatever. So I decided that I wanted to get my chart read again. And I went to him because I was like, you know what, I've spoken to this guy, he seems pretty good. I will give my money to him. Now it was quite a decent amount of money. And after I had had my session, because it was a little session and then I had like a take home booklet, I just felt really flat about the whole thing. It didn't, it wasn't what I wanted really. It wasn't that in depth that I was looking for. Sometime later, I was doing my own research on my astrology chart and <laughs> then I decided to pick up his book and, you know, read a few of the things in there as well. And I was like, I'm pretty sure I just read this. And I had found the website that he had literally copied and pasted 95% of the information he'd put in this booklet for me that I had paid for. It was free on the internet. So I was pissed, as you can imagine. I couldn't believe that I'd been had. Like, I was really shocked more than anything that, that someone would say, oh, I'm this, and then spend two hours maybe probably less copying and pasting everything over and then going here and then happily taking my money for that. So I get it. There are people out there who are dodgy as, but generally speaking, it's really not the case. You know, if someone is presenting themselves in a way to you that feels inauthentic, I don't know if their YouTube videos are perfect and flawless and edited and you know, their makeup's just fantastic and just on point and all this kind of stuff and you know their aesthetic is just like gorgeous. I don't see how that really has anything to do with how authentic they actually are. To do stuff like that, let me just tell you, takes a lot of time and a lot of energy and a lot of editing. It's it's not like a quick process of like, oh I'll make myself look perfect and then I'll get money for it. There's a lot of energy that goes into that stuff. Now yes, some people who are, I don't know, putting on their shiny mirror, you know, they're not and that's just the way that it is. But just because someone's presenting themselves in that way, in a way that maybe more people in the mainstream can get on board with, it doesn't mean that they are any less authentic. It doesn't mean that they haven't put time and learning and their experience into what they are producing in terms of what they're getting money for or services, products, that kind of thing. Like it just, it doesn't really come into it. So I mean, if you ever get a feeling about anyone and you're like, I don't really think that their products are great or I don't think their services are authentic, like don't purchase from them. There are so many awesome options out there. Now I'm going to actually link a couple of stores down below, magical witchy spiritual stores that I've personally purchased from. There are a lot more out there who I would 100% trust, you know, people that I know of that like I will be parting with my money and giving it to them at some point so I can receive the goodness that they've got going. But I won't put them down below because I haven't used them yet. But the ones that I have I will link down below. Just as a thing, just as a little shout out, I don't know if you're feeling in the mood to buy something magical, I guess you can do that down below. So I just kind of wanted to put that out there. Let's not drag each other through the mud. There is nothing wrong at all with receiving trade notes for goods and services whatsoever. It's fun. It's awesome. You don't have to purchase at any point ever if you don't want to. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm wishing you so many blessings and sending bucketfuls of love. <laughs> All right. I'll see you in the next video.